Hello, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Baltimore Ravens and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. With that, let's head over to Raymond James Stadium in Tampa for the call of this one. We bring in our broadcast team, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are just a few miles from the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with the Baltimore Ravens. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And before kickoff, Charles, quickly, your keys to the game. Well, partner, I could give you the standard ones, turnovers, special teams play. But here's one that doesn't get talked about much anymore, and that's time of possession. Whoever controls the football, gives their defense a break, and takes care of business, that's the team that's going to win this ball game. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And off we go from Tampa. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So out come the Bucs now for their first drive. They'll be led out by their six foot four quarterback, the former number one overall pick in 2015, Jameis Winston. And this is a guy who cares totally about his team. He will do whatever it takes for a play to be successful and for his team to win. I've seen him become a lead blocker on running plays, even though I'm sure his coaches don't want him anywhere near that pile. Now the first carry for Ronald Jones. Call it no gain on the game's first play. And it's second down now. And one advantage for this offensive unit is the big target, Mike Evans. Play to his strength, his size and catch radius. Throw it up there, let him go get it. So after the run for no gain, here's second and ten. Get ready, get ready. Here we go. Winston, a handoff. This is Jones. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. And free safety Earl Thomas has a list of accomplishments as long as anyone's arm. But the thing I think about with him at all times, no matter what happens in front of him on the defensive end of the ball, he's back there to erase any mistakes that happen. The top guy in the league, as far as I'm concerned, in that category. Ready? So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. From the shotgun, it's Winston. And he finds Howard complete. And he'll be brought down at the 28, and that is well short of the first. They stop him for only three that time, and that'll bring up fourth down. There's an example of good situational football being played by a defense. They understood where the third down play was, the down and distance, and made sure that they didn't get anywhere near that bringing up fourth down. Yeah, they were sniffing out that marker, didn't want to let him get close to there, and now a likely three and out to start. Yeah, I love the way they rallied to the football and got to him and made sure he didn't give up much run after catch. So on now is the Clemson man, Bradley Pinion, to punt this one away. Back deep is DeAnthony Thomas. A beautiful fake. A good return there, call it 13 yards. And the Ravens, they'll take over. So here come the Ravens now, ready to get the football for the first time. Commanding the offense will be Lamar Jackson, the electric quarterback out of the University of Louisville. Mm -hmm. 
Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. From the gun, Jackson. He'll buy some time right. And now he's going to use his legs. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. Watch the slip. Watch the slip. Looking to throw again on second down. Jackson, Roberts has it. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. They get 14 on that one. That's good for a Baltimore first down. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. And the former Heisman winner, this is Mark Ingram. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. And a very good offensive unit here. One of the reasons they're so good is running back Mark Ingram. Took a little while for him to find his footing when he got into the league, but the former Heisman Trophy winner has it now and has really upped his pass receiving potential. A nice player. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. You got to get the ball until you get the ball right here. Jackson. Short throw underneath to Hurst. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And a quick look at the Buccaneer defensive starters. And Dominican Sue provokes a whole lot of conversation. But at the end, everyone agrees one of the best defensive tackles in the NFL. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. To throw is Jackson. And he's got his man, Marquise Brown. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks' 27-yard line. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive. And they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down. They did. Big time pickup for them. And now... I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone. Because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. Makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. Back to the running game, it's Ingram. And only a yard this time as he's taken down right around the 26. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second and nine, Jackson, and that is incomplete. A lot of force bearing down on him there. He could not hang on. It's third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. Now play number seven of this drive, but it's a tough third and nine. Watch the screen, watch the screen, watch the screen, watch the screen. Jackson from the shotgun. He's got it to Ingram, complete. And he's not going to sniff the first down here. He stopped at the 25. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. Got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. So on fourth down, here's the Ravens Pro Bowl kicker, Justin Tucker, out onto the field. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. 
And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And the Ravens strike first at 3 zip. No touchdown there, but if that first drive is any indication, looks like they're going to have a pretty good day passing the football. I would say confidence would have to be pretty high after that first drive, able to throw it almost at will. You're exactly right. They didn't get the touchdown, but three points serves as a nice notice about how this offense is going to move. Kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Brashad Perriman, and that'll bring up second down. Had an open man that time, but ended up putting a little too much heat on it, don't you think, partner? Absolutely. Just needed a touch more air under it. Instead, he fired an absolute bullet. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. Jameis to throw it. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. That catch good for five. It's third down. I think defensively, you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. 14 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. And that's the first connection, the number one overall pick in 2015, finding the number seven pick in 2014 in Evans. And what a great target Mike Evans is for Jameis Winston. Winston's a pretty accurate thrower, but that catch radius that Evans provides, that makes him that much more dangerous. Winston now to throw on first down. That's caught by Howard. 15 yards as Tampa Bay picks up the first. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. territory now here's a first and 10 at the 41 to throw is Winston and it's a short one here complete to the tight end and this will leave him a yard short nice pickup of nine yards on first down We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. And it'll be a little shy of the 25 here at the 26-yard line. Six yards, the pick up, and that's a first down. Winston in the offense with a first and ten, and he's five for six now throwing the ball on this drive. They go play action. Winston, and this is caught by Evans. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. offense. So a decent game, but all for naught on the penalty. It's too bad, isn't it? They were feeling pretty good about it. The only people celebrating, 
the guys who just gave up that play. Ready. Blue ready. Let him know, let him know. Let him know, let him know. Where's that up? Jameis again. He finds his target. It's Evans. They get a good chunk of that penalty yardage back. A gain of 15. Second down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. Ready! Move in! Hey, we're pretty quiet, D. We're pretty quiet. Wait, to throw again on second down. Winston to the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. And they try to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. This will be the eighth play of the drive here. Third and four. To the air again with Winston. He finds his tight end, Howard. That's complete. And he picks up the first down yardage as he takes it down to the 16. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route, but he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. Winston now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. Eight of 10, it's first down. And he'll go down here at the 12 yard line. Four yards on the dump off, it's second down. To throw on second and six. Winston looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A 12-yard touchdown grab. And the Bucs have taken the lead. Brandon, what we just saw there were two guys who were in sync. The person delivering the ball, but especially the person running the route. Tremendous job. It results in a terrific play. Matt Gay on for the extra point. And this is up and good to make it 7-3. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's all finished off with a touchdown by Tampa Bay. Following the touchdown now, it's Bradley Pinion on to kick this one away. This is taken at the three. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want a drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you've met fan bases that wanted that, <laughs> that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants a drive to end with a kick <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. They'll run with Ingram here to begin the drive. Shaquille Barrett in on the tackle. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here, and if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. Let's go. 
to throw on second and six. Jackson, he's going to find his tight end, Boyle. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. And, partner, I think that's a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. From the gun on third down, Jackson. And he's got Sneed. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. That's good for a Raven first down, 15 yards there. Third and four is always a tough call. Maybe a little too long to run for it, but not too long to hit him on the quick slant. And that was well executed. Found the window and zipped it right in there. This is Ingram on first and 10. And he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage. It's second down. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold him to no gain. Now the pass brought in by Roberts. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. A three-yard gain on the play brings up third down. And they'll need the 39 here for a first. This is third down. From the gun, it's Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucs 22-yard line. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end, a guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Jackson and the offense come up first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. They run, it's Mark Ingram. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. again a first down carry Ingram churning he lost the football but fortunately he's able to recover his own fumble and that could have been trouble all I can say about this play is that someone's living right I mean he's trying to gain yardage trying to get upfield ball comes free what's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball you can sense it oh you can sense it and somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Now Jackson. Now he's got it. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That catch good for five. It's third down. Well, they're unable to convert that into much, but it's never a bad idea to try to get the ball into a tight end of his caliber's hands and see what kind of disruption he can cause. So third and inches, and this will be the ninth play of the drive. Jackson, eluding the, and he will score. Touchdown, Baltimore. Taking it in from two yards out, and the Ravens have retaken the lead. 
Well, this was a pass all the way, but he just kept buying time, didn't he? It was kind of like, wait, wait. Oh, it's open. Time to hop foot it and go. And boy, was he successful. Yeah, didn't go to the outside toward the pylon, just straight ahead, middle third of the field. Shortest distance between two points. Straight line. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. So that one a pretty time-consuming 10-play drive. And it was capped off by the touchdown run that came from Lamar Jackson. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On the counter, here's Jones. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. 10-7 our score after one right here on EA Sports. Bucks on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Winston. And the pressure gets there, and Winston goes down. Marching in for the sack, Matthew Judon. And partner, it's safe to say that the secondary really contributed to that sack. Yeah, nickel set, five defensive backs. They covered everything. Nowhere to go with the football. But my question is, why didn't he throw it away? Here's Bradley Pinion now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Here's Thomas. A very good return there, give him an even 20 yards. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 43. The drive starts here with a carry by Ingram. 
just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second and nine, Jackson. Sneed's got it. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. The Ravens on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five to this point. This will be third and six. He goes underneath to Ingram. And he's got the first down before being taken down at the 46. Give him seven yards on the play as they do pick up the third down conversion. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. A little bit of space there for the first down run as that's going to get him about five yards. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Here's Jackson to throw. He's got his man. It's Andrews. That's good for a Raven first down. 15 yards there. I like how they worked the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from you a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. Second down, Ingram. And he'll get it down inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. And a nice run. They're going to take this close to the first down marker at the Bucks' 18-yard line. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. The Ravens on third down. They have been superb. Five for six for this point. This time they face a third and two. It's complete to Snead. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Here we go. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. They'll run. This is Hill. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that'll make it second and goal. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Oh. 
Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. They'll look to run with Ingram. And the D not yielding much there. He's only going to get a yard to about the two. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot in the ground and cut back. It just never materialized. This Tampa Bay defense, they held strong on the first two plays. Now third and goal. They'll try and run. Ingram. And he'll go backwards, losing yardage to the five. A rough go there on third down, a loss of four. Okay, so you just took the big loss. Now what are you doing on fourth down? Well, we have a change of plans now is what we have because I think they were looking at the play sheet, trying to dial something up to go for it on fourth down. But after that loss, that goes right out the window. Now you have to kick the field goal and hope to come back down the next time and score. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Tucker's kick is good. And the lead stretches to six here. It's 13-7. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Huh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Tucker now following the made field goal set to kick it away. This is taken at the three. And he'll get it up to about the 26 yard line just across the 25. Let's go. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Ready. Winston Ready. and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at their own 26. They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. Another example right there how this defense really is winning the entire game at the point of attack. Yeah, right there at the line of scrimmage because they are dominating. It allows their interior guys to get upfield and spill into the backfield. So how are you going to combat that? You know, because they bring in your tight end, keep him in, your running backs, they have to step forward. Bottom line, your offensive line has to block them first to give yourself a chance. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Jones. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. To throw, Winston. He's got Evans. A familiar ring to that one. Winston to Evans for the Buccaneer first. Well, we always hear about the connections some quarterbacks have with certain receivers. I think this guy has a connection with just about everyone. Didn't mind throwing it in there against double coverage to him. Shows some confidence, supreme confidence. Big time confidence that he would make the play for him, and he did. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Working out of the gun, Winston. Throw right side, take it in by Godwin. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 10 yards there and a Buccaneer first down.
couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. Now Jones. And across midfield he goes into Raven territory. Five yards on the carry, good pickup on first down. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves Ball creases ready. like they were able to exploit right there. I'm coming for you, son. I'm coming for you, son. Where do we go? Draw play, Winston to Jones. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. That one, a first That's down pickup of eight. I think they like this drive a little bit better there, partner. Running game helping out, picking up some of the slack. Because remember the last drive, they went three and out. After the run by Jones, here's first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Patrick Onwasor up to make the tackle. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. They'll try to throw now. Winston. No escape and he goes down Matt Judon gets him for a loss of five he is so tough to handle on the blitz and that's exhibit A and we say it all the time have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that you have to help your offensive line out they're going to protect you as best they can and if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball they're doing a really nice job but when you hold it and give up a sack you're really almost discrediting their work Winston needing a big play after the sack as he leads the Bucks up on third and long. From the gun, Winston. That's complete to his receiver, Gabriel. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. A good pick up there, 22. I think it all came together there in breaking route. Drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Jameis now 12 of 15 throwing the ball, 80% so far, and it's first and 10. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. Marlon Humphrey with the tackle defensively. That's a strong pickup right there on first down, and as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Now it's a bootleg with Winston. This is caught. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. First catch for him. It's good for a dozen and a first down. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receiver's breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Jalen Ferguson. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. They'll try again on second and goal after going backwards to the 12. 
on second down, Barber. He'll get this down inside the 10 for a pickup of about three. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here. Not even a thought, is it? Defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. This has been a long drive. you got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they can? And he's going to go down. Sacked right around the 17. Matt Judon picks up his second sack of the afternoon. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. So on fourth down, on comes the Buccaneer kicker, Matt Gay. This a 33-yard attempt. And Gay knocks this one through. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. And that will go down as a 15-play drive, and it results in three points. So some disappointment? It's funny. We had our conference before the game with the offensive coordinator. And what did he tell us? I just want every drive to end in a kick. Right, an extra point, a punt, or a field goal. Well, in this case, I think it is a little bit of a disappointment because it did end in a kick, but that type of a drive should end in the end zone. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. <laughs> he put it through the post. That's going to help him at contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that helped him at contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. <laughs> toe bash. I don't know about <laughs> <Toe> that. <bashed. laughs> Super toe. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. It's a loss of four on the first down play. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. That was a classic example of trying to run with the ball without securing the catch. He was thinking about those rack yards instead of making the catch first and then taking off. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. They run from the pistol with Ingram. And a good job defensively. They stop him short of the first at the 32. Now the Bucks going to use the first of their timeouts. So as they take it over, we step aside. So on fourth down, here's Sam Cook to punt it away. Back deep, Jadon Mickens. A good kick, 49 yards, just three on the return. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. Jameis Winston and the rest of the Bucs set to begin this next drive. But a decent start for him here in this first half, but they're losing. And I think as the captain of the offense, you probably always feel like you need to do more in that situation. The best have always felt that way. And they won't settle for anything less. So right now, his goal is to increase what he's doing on the field, try to make sure his teammates come along with him. And he feels like, if I do better, 
everyone will do better. And that's what we're seeing from him right now. Got to have a little extra determination. Yeah, a little extra determination. He has thrown the touchdown pass. No interceptions for him personally to this point. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets this football out shy of the 30 to the 29. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Second down, Winston. He's got this one complete to Perriman. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. First down now, but the clock continues to move. Jameis to throw it. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Call that a very strong gain of 24. And that was a heck of a shot right there by Jameis Winston. Boy, he has a superior right arm, doesn't he? You saw him play baseball. Yeah, he's actually a switch hitter in baseball. Outfielder, and then, of course, a very hard-throwing pitcher. That's translated well in the National Football League. That it has. When he has to make that throw on a line, he's got plenty of arm to do it. Winston now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. He hit his first, now this from 43. Gay's kick is good. And that will tie things up as we head toward halftime. So they're able to make things level just before half and also leave very, very little time on the clock. And I love the way that you phrased that. Brought a little soccer into it. And that's really apropos considering they just kicked a field goal to tie things up. Square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Time here for likely one play, and then these two teams will head to the locker room all even. And you know the play call is just feeling it right now. Let's go ahead and go for this one. A big <laughs> shot down. No, no, no. Guaranteed head coach is like, don't get crazy. Take the knee. Let's get out of here. Tie game. We'll just start all over. We thought this one would be a close battle coming in, and we have not been disappointed. But they are all even to this point. So to see if either side can pull away, Let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the start of the second half. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three.
ready to get the party started for the second half. It was an even first half, all tied on the scoreboard. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Now a hit and a loose football. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And they will be set up now as he brings this thing all the way back inside the 20. So a teammate picking him up there, that was nearly disaster. And the way that you coach these things, you want to make sure you have eyes towards the return guy because you want to make sure that the catch is secure. And a lot of teams do that. They have at least one guy. Okay, you're responsible for making sure he secures the catch. He's not always the one that makes the recovery, but he can always sound out the alarm. Hey, ball's on the ground. We've got to get it back. And this is one of those bang-bang plays, Charles. Did the knee hit first or did the ball come out first? This is where you need that 20-20 eyesight, don't you, Brandon? You've got to see which one happened first. If the knee hit the ground, then they will keep possession. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. They have a chance to break our tie here as we get a look at the first drive of quarter three. And it's such a tone setter, isn't it? Because both sides trying to seize momentum to begin the half. What do they have dialed up that'll give them an advantage to move the ball downfield? Let's find out what they have dialed up. They'll come up second and six now from the 24. Let's put them on the buses. Let's put that team on the bus. From the gun, it's a run for Ingram. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys... Hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. From the gun on third down, Jackson. He finds Roberts complete. And he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. Give him six yards in the first down. One of the selling points at the in route is it gives the quarterback a really nice sight line to his receiver and almost on a direct shot, able to throw the ball into the middle of the field and have a great chance of success as they did on that play. Jackson now pretty amazing. 14 of 16 throwing the ball. It's first and 10. Here's Ingram. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a pickup of 11 and a Baltimore first down. He's obviously a bit of a shorter running back. Sometimes when he goes up the middle like that, he gets lost in there, and then he pops out for 10, 20 yards. I actually asked NFL linebackers if that was true. Do you actually lose sight of some of the smaller running backs? And all of them confirmed that that can be a problem. Think of it this way. Two of the top running backs in NFL history, Emmitt Smith, Barry Sanders, both 5'10". And this one's going to go the wrong way. Losing yardage back at the 42. A loss of two there, second down. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football, don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it, and it won't help them at contract time. On second and 12, Jackson. He's got it to Ingram, complete. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. 
to throw is Jackson from the gun on third down. And that is incomplete. Well, the other day they told us when we've got third and five or less, we have to be able to convert. And I guess every team would say that, Charles, but an opportunity miss there. What they were trying to tell us is they believe it's a matchup game at that point. And they liked some matchups that they had, thought they could exploit them, unable to do so on that play. Here's Sam Cook now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets this away. It's a good one, drawing toward the sidelines. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. Their defense did its job, yielded no points. Now it's the offense's turn. And how much fun is that when you set things up to start a half and you just tell you guys, hey, if you can shut them down, get it back for our offense, we can roll. And they played out perfectly. Now, can the offense do what they wanted to do at the half, which is find those weaknesses and now attack them and score some points. And break this tie. Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at the 20. A throw left side to start the drive is complete. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. I think it's okay there. They didn't get a whole lot on that play, but it's nice to have a safety valve that's built like this guy. Big target, guy you can spot pretty easily, put it on him when your other targets aren't open. Here's a second and five now from the 25. They run the counter, Jones. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First down Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. From the shotgun, it's Winston. Looking for Godwin, and he's got him complete. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. That one goes for 24 yards. Well, coaches always talk about finding balance on offense. I don't think you can get much more balance than this. Big time run. Big time pass. A one-two combination looked pretty good. How about that? Let's see if they, let's see if they can continue to take that kind of a punch, though. Ready. So the ball moves from 138 to the other as they come up on first and ten. They run the counter. It's Jones, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. This will be a two-yard loss on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. He already has two sacks to his credit, now another tackle for loss. And you know how you can always identify who was supposed to block him? They're the ones helping up the person who just got knocked to the ground with the ball, right? Whether it's a running play or a pass play, They've got to figure out a way to slow him down. Maybe you chip him with a second guy. Maybe you just out and out double him. Maybe you make sure you take the ball and throw it as far away from him as possible. Because right now, he is wrecking things for them. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Well, the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Ready. So third down, they need to get to the 28 for a first. Hey man, hey man. The the go. To throw is Winston. Open man is Godwin, it's complete. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens 21. Partner, this is one of the best routes anyone can have in their offensive playbook. Tough to defend because you think it's a go route, and then he breaks it back on the comeback. There's one other thing you need as well. A well-thrown ball. Exactly right. Got a guy who has some precision in throwing the football because of the timing of the route. Winston.
Princeton in the yeah, offense yeah. with a first and 10. And he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Here's Winston. And break, the tight end's got it. And they'll bring him down at the 18-yard line. Give him a couple on the catch at second and eight. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. Jameis again. And that going to be incomplete. A lot of contact, no call, and it's third down. We've seen good cover skills on display throughout this game, really from both teams. And there's another nice example there of them making it difficult to complete a pass. A field goal would get them the lead, but that's not what they're shooting for as they come up on third down. To the air again with Winston. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first, but at least it's fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This just a 35-yard attempt from the left hash. The game knocks this one through. And that will break our tie and give him a three-point lead. This is his third field goal now with a ball game, and they've needed his leg. This last one gives him the lead. It's been a back-and-forth kind of a game, hasn't it? Now you got to tell your defense, guys, we need you to make this stand up because we've got the momentum going in the right direction, but we need you to make sure we carry it home. now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now, with a game this close, you've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 23. They'll try to get the ground game going with Ingram. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Levante David in on the tackle. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now Ingram, he's been busy today. Only a couple there as he'll be brought down about the 28. And it looks like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Jackson from the shotgun. Roberts has it. And he will have a first down as they get him to the ground at the 37. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Watch that creep, watch that creep. Now it's Ingram, and he loses the football a second time. And it's picked up by the Buccaneers. And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. 
So the defense there, opportunistic. It's nice to give them credit, isn't it? Because so many times it's more a matter of what the offensive guy didn't do. He didn't secure the ball, didn't cover up. In this case, let's just give credit to where it belongs. Knocked it free, made a big play. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And they split the uprights last time for three. They've got the lead. They're not going to play this conservative. They're, they're not hoping for another field goal. They're hoping for a touchdown. I'm with you on that one. I like where your head is. I like the way you're thinking because you're exactly right. Trying to sit on a lead and play that way, that doesn't work too well for most teams. Run your offense. Yeah, Run what you do best. Exactly. Put it all the way down and try to increase your lead in a big way. And the best way to do it, touchdowns. They'll try and get the running game going with Jones. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Tough day, tough sledding right there, and it's been that way the entire game. Not a whole lot of room to ramble for him. Yeah, you're right. It's been that way all afternoon. Didn't get a whole lot better there. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Now Winston. Looking for Perriman there. He's got him. And he gets it all the way down inside the 10 and mark him at the 5. Call that a very strong gain of 24. One of the feature points of the in route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. Now Jones. And that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. Not a whole lot there after the penalty, but remember, it was first and five, not first and ten. So now they can keep grinding out first downs, and good things can happen for them. Just second and short coming up. One back in the game. That's Jones, second and goal. Now Winston. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. He was looking for Chris Godwin that time, but now it's third and goal. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. Well, they've been so good on third down all day long. Can they convert another here on third and goal? Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. So they opted to pass for it on third and goal. Let's see what they do on fourth and goal. Well, I think they threw it with the idea that if they didn't get it, they would go for it on fourth and goal. So they've got another play in their pocket. They're going to have to call it right now. No field goal here. So they'll turn to the kicker again. He's been a busy man thus far. From the left half, should be a fairly easy one here. Gay's kick is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So make him four out of four now in the field goal department, and he's able to extend their lead. When drives are bogged down, he's been automatic out there. So nice to have a kicker you can count on to put points on the board. now to kick this one away. This will be fielded at the six. And not a bad return. Here he gets it out to the 25-yard line. Let's go, Let's go. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And last time they coughed it up, led to a field goal. They're fortunate that it only led to a field goal, but still, they're not happy about it. Could you sense the relief, though? 
oh. when they only gave up the field goal. <laughs> And they were able to trot back out on the field and start this drive. A little more pep in their step because they didn't cost their team a touchdown. But they know they've got to do it a lot better than they did on the last possession. The coach will just be relieved, though, if they recoup with a score here, right? I think the coach would be ecstatic to see them pick themselves back up and now take it downfield and punch in the end zone without turning it over. They'll run on first down. Ingram, and not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his coach prior to the game. He's definitely one of the better linebackers of reading a play and flowing to make the stop before it turns into something big. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine for the 26. And a 20th carry now for Ingram. Two runs in a row, but only two yards to show for it. Back-to-back -back runs, I'd say that encompassed maximum effort for minimal gain. Minimal yardage, and now they're going to need something more than minimal on this play coming up. And the box with an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. From the gun, Jackson. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Shaquille Barrett put that sack by his name in the stat sheet. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on to punt for Baltimore. Averaging over 50 yards a punt so far as this one's away. A big boot that time, 57 yards the official distance. And that will come the offense as they take over. A look at Jameis Winston now as he gears up to lead this offense again. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up and get their big guy going again. Now this one complete downfield on the left side. That one goes for 24 yards. Jameis now nearing the 300-yard mark with still a quarter to play. It's first and 10. A run with Ogan Bawale. Good cover defensively as they get to him just beyond the 45 after the juke. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. to throw Winston and that one got tipped kind of threw everything off it brings up third anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air I expect someone to catch it doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field in this case no one came up with it they head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down throwing Winston and now the ball's out, fumble near midfield, and it's picked up by the Ravens. And this is going to be brought back for a Baltimore touchdown. The pass receiver turned into a runner, then he turned into a fumbler, and it goes the other way for six. I love your description, although for the offense, they're not too happy about it, but for the defense, what a big-time play for them. Never give up on anything. Sometimes you create your own points. But the receiver, hard to fault him. He's just going for extra yard. That's exactly what you're supposed to do, but you have to take care of the football.
Now Tucker to add the PAT. And that one puts them on top here in the third. The scoop and score, always an exciting play in football, and we witnessed it there, grabbing it off the ground and then rumbling it into the end zone for six. So here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at their own 26. Here's Winston. He finds his tight end, Howard, that's complete. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Winston. And this is going to wind up incomplete. The coverage there too strong on the deep ball, and now they face a third down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. In this case, just a little bit too much. Here's Bradley Pinion now as he's on to punt for Tampa Bay. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Ravens will get it. First and 10 from deep in their own territory. And the Ravens taking the field. They're out in front. Last time they had to punt it away. We'll see if they can add to their lead now. They don't want to go out and, and punt it away again. This team now wants to get a cushion, put people away. They want to run their offense and have it end up in the end zone. Jackson and the Ravens come up now first and 10 at their own 15. And a short gain across the 15 to the 17-yard line. Two yards the gain on the keeper, and it's second down. Well, we saw him there trying to get it to the outside, trying to get to the perimeter, but not a whole lot of room there. But there's got to be one positive to that. If you keep moving laterally, creases tend to develop as the game moves on, and they can run it back inside later. On second down now, it's Ingram. And he's going to be taken down with a marker on the field. So let's see about the call. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still a few inches short of a first down as they come up now on second down. 
After the penalty, it's Ingram. And not much there at all. He's up only to about the 16-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. In order to play really good run defense when you're playing a 3-4, those three guys up front, the nose tackle and the guys they call the defensive ends, they're usually big, big people because they're going to have to eat up a lot of blockers because it's usually five on three. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. The 305-pound and Dalmican Sue fighting the path to the QB there. Well, they go play fake. The problem is nobody was faked out. <laughs> and when no one's faked out, what's the end result? Sick. Quarterback gets hit. <laughs> Here's Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. So a change of possession here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> go to so something well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. Watch the run, watch the run. Winston now. And he's going to find his man out of the backfield. That's complete. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that's going to lead to a third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play. But if you're on offense, be aware. A ball may come your way. And defensively, Baltimore's in a dime look here on third. Working out of the gun, Winston. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Brandon Carr. And his guys will set up shop at midfield at the 50-yard line. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different colored jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. Baltimore with good starting field position as they come up first and 10 right at the 50-yard line. Well, I think this defense knew what was coming as he is smothered behind the line. That's going to wind up a loss of a full three yards on first down. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up and then some on second and 13. From the gun, it's Jackson. That's into the hands of the tight end, Boyle. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. That catch good for five. It's third down. I know exactly what's going to be said about that play from the defensive perspective. What's that? That's why I tell all you guys we need more than one tackler to the ball. He broke the first tackle. Luckily enough, there were more people there to get him down. 
third down, Jackson. They'll roll him out right. He can run for it, and he will. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Lamar Jackson, such a threat with those legs, able to improvise and get the first. All right, partner, I'm a defender, but I've got to express my admiration there. Moving around, making it happen, and instead of worrying about protecting himself, he goes and gets the first down. I've got to give it to him on that one. Normally, you don't want your guy taking shots, your quarterback, but it's winning time here in the fourth quarter. If he needs to make those plays with the legs, go ahead, right? Yeah, no doubt about it. It's, at this stage of the game, all protections, they're off. Jackson now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and 10. And he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though, huh? Yeah, you went, you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, it kind of works like a sack for the defense there. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure it out, sniff it out, and finish it off. Second and 11 now. Jackson. It's complete to Snead. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. A three yard gain on play. Brings up third down. They got to get to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Now Jackson. From the gun, he'll throw. He's going to find his tight end, Boyle. The completion good for only six, and that'll bring up fourth. They got the completion, but they didn't get the first down, so you got to think if you're on the defensive side of the ball, you're pretty happy with what you just accomplished there. Yeah, guy, like you said, got him out of bounds, stopped the clock, kept him short of the marker. So here comes Justin Tucker in a big spot. From the right hash, it's a 38-yard attempt. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because they'd feel a whole lot better about their position. Well, and a touchdown in the other direction. All of a sudden, they're down. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense set to take over again. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. Winston and the Bucks take over now, first and 10 at their own 22. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Jameis to throw it. He completes it to Evans. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 
A big pickup there, 18 yards and a Buccaneer first. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Jameis now on first down. He's got this one complete to Perriman. It's a gain of 11, and the Bucs have a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So in Raven territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Again, it's Winston. And he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Jihad Ward. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop him. Brandon, I think you understand the type of afternoon this offensive line is having. It is a long one for them. Long for you to spend it with me. Long for them trying to block those guys. They've given up a whole lot of sacks, and the speed and quickness of that defensive line is eating them alive. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Winston. That's caught by Howard. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six foot six inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it, it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He had told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. Winston to Godwin on the connection there for a Tampa Bay first. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? Takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football. Because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone. Sometimes you're throwing it between the zone. Sometimes the receiver's going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there. It's a tough read, but when they're in sync, it's really effective. They run it. It's Ogun Bawale. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. Whenever we talk about the best strong safeties, one word constantly comes up, and that's instinct, being able to diagnose run or pass and make the appropriate moves. He crashed down hard there. He was ready for that running play. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. From the shotgun, it's Winston. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield, complete. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. That's good for 28 yards. We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches, and they're trying to create one there, getting it to their back out of the backfield to make a bigger play. As we often say, get it to him in space, let him use his leg. Yeah, if, if he can get a matchup against a linebacker or maybe a defensive end dropping out in a zone blitz, he's going to win that battle just about every time. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gutting for on first and goal. He drops this off to Ogan Bawale. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Well, it's been the air game that's taken them down on this drive before they finally turned around and handed it off on the last play. And yeah, now they're looking for the big boys to get them in the end zone. Couldn't do it there. It'll be interesting to see. Offensive lines had to pass block a lot on this drive, but they'll be able to revert and fire out and create some space in the run game. 
Oh, no, he lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. This has been a long drive. You got to figure a field goal would be a letdown. Can they convert now on third and goal? From the gun, Winston. And he finds Howard complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Well, they are able to get nine yards out of that, but now it's fourth down. That's certainly playing down in distance very well by the defense, isn't it? Take whatever you want underneath by all means. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. And Gain knocks this one through. And that'll bring him back within a point. So yet another field goal to end a drive. That has been a very common theme. He's now hit five of them in this game. Yeah, Brandon, as an offense, you hate that you've had to call on your kicker so often. But you have to love the fact that time and time again, he's come through. The punter pinion now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. The Ravens offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. I guess the good news as they start this drive is that they, they still do have the lead, Charles. If their defense hadn't been able to hold them to a field goal on the other side, they'd be down. But now it's about preserving that very small lead. It is preserving and maybe stretching it out a little bit because if you're a starter on that side of the ball, I certainly hope you didn't loosen up your shoulder pads or start to cut the tape off because if you did, you did it way too soon. They've got to go back out there with renewed vigor for lack of a better term, and also a good plan. They need points, and they need a now. Throwing is Jackson toward the left sideline, but it's incomplete. Trying to get it to Willie Sneed there. That'll bring up second down. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. On second and 10, Jackson. That's caught left side by the tight end, Boyle. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be occasional, right? Safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but more, mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leading receiver. They'll try to run some clock with Ingram. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. And he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier, probably at the forefront of his mind, just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, 
They're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain that time, and they're going to be left looking up at a fourth and one. Here's Sam Cook now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. The field position game, such an overlooked facet, Charles, of an NFL game. But this offense, they're going to be pinned back. What an ideal punt. An ideal punt, and it leads to that term, complimentary football because them doing that puts their defense in a great spot, doesn't it? Gives them a chance. If they want to be aggressive, try and maybe get a safety out of this whole thing, it puts them in that position. Here's Hogan Bawale, and an alley to run, and they'll get him down up the 15 just shy of the 20. 10 yards there and a Buccaneer first down. What makes a draw play like that successful? Well, we did see where he made the first wave miss, and that was a big part of it, but a lot of it is just being actors back there, making the defense think it's going to be a pass. He's going to look deep for Perriman. It's caught inside the 25. It's a big play there for the Buccaneers. 59 yards. That's a big time pitch and catch right there. And partner, I remember the days when quarterbacks would try this. They were holding their breath. But nowadays, they're counting on their receiver to be just a little bit better than the defensive back when it's one-on-one -on -one and the ball's in the air like that. So barely time to catch our breath. Here's first and 10 just outside the red zone. Now Winston. He finds his target. It's Evans. And they'll get this down to the 10. Back-to-back -back nice plays. 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, he flew past 200, 300, 400 yards. Now he's over 450 yards passing on the day. So what you're saying is oxygen for everyone catching the ball and trying to defend? Yeah, especially those guys trying to defend right now. No doubt. They've got to be a confused group because they haven't been able to defend him very well at all. And I think he just wants to keep firing. When you have that kind of a day, you're just locked in. Just keep calling those pass plays. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. Now Winston. And oh, a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off here by Jimmy Smith. Well, I don't think we'll have to look very hard to find our play of the game. That was an absolutely monstrous big play right there. Backs to the wall, the offense has it in the red zone, driving for the winning score, and he says, not on my watch, and that is one happy bunch on the sidelines. And now here come the Ravens. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. The previous play is under review.
Winston's pass intended for Rashad Perriman. Incomplete. After review of the play, the ruling on the field stands. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. Fourth quarter, two minutes on the clock in a tight one-point game. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a second down now as they search for a way to get this one to the finish line. Again, they'll run with Ingram. Down he goes at the 23, a pickup of four. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Ingram again. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Here's Sam Cook now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Here's Mickens to return. A very good return that time, 18 yards. Winston readies the offense. Down by one, just over a minute, 40 to play. A field goal would be a game winner as they come up on first down. So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 44. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Looking for Perriman there, he's got him. A gain of six there on first. At this stage, you've got to hustle. Got to get back to the line of scrimmage because you're saving that timeout to make sure you have a chance to get your kicker out there for the big shot. Now Jameis trying to hurry his crew to the line. Winston now from the 50. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. A couple extra defensive backs out there in the dime, and because of that, really not many places to throw the football, if any. And typically, what would you want to do against that dime? Run the football. You want to run the ball, but you can't do it in this situation. Not nearly enough time on the clock. You having to really navigate against a tough defense presented against you. Back to throw. He finds his tight end, Howard. That's complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. First down, Tampa Bay there, a gain of 13. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. He'll look to throw. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Ready. That last Ready. catch short of the marker by just a yard leaves him with a very manageable second and one. Back to throw. Side to Perriman and it's caught. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Ready. 
Black 25. 48, right now. Let's go. Woo 48. 48 for Mike. And we're Barber on first and 10. And he'll get this one down to about the 10 yard line. Yeah. Ravens going to use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. to the ground this time with Jones and he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six it's a four yard pick up there and it leaves him with third and five typically we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic but in this case how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play and a timeout coming in this will be their final one with 10 seconds remaining So it all rests now on the right foot of the kicker, Matt Gay. From the left hash, this for the win. And this one is right through. And it's celebration time on that sideline as they have taken the lead in the final seconds. I guess we can call that a welcome to the NFL <laughs> moment right there. And he came in with open arms and knocked it through. Yeah, how about that? It's almost surely a game winner, right? And you know, rookie kickers, usually the leash is kind of short, isn't it? I think they went ahead and got that extended model for him now after making that kick. The punter Pinion now to kick this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. Look at the clock. Everyone knows the situation. Probably time here for one final play. And we know what that play is going to be. It's got to be some sort of Hail Mary throwing it towards the end zone and hoping someone can catch it or catch it off of a tip. Think back to 2015. Didn't we see Green Bay pull that off yep, twice absolutely. in the season? Once in the regular season, once in the playoffs. So stranger things have happened. It'd be interesting to see what the defensive strategy is about who they put on the field to try and knock that ball away. Well, going into the final play of this game, they knew that they needed some type of a miracle there at the very end, but they couldn't get it done. However, we were treated to really a spectacular affair. Even though they didn't finish it off, you're exactly right. They took us down to the last play. We're still, you're wondering, could it happen? Possibly, even though we both knew it was a long shot. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.